you can help me through this one. So I'm trying to figure out how to tell people what cancer is um, in a deeper way. So we know that cancer is a, a cells in the body that are abnormally growing extra fast. Well, I guess we'll just talk through it and see if this works. But there are cells in the body that are growing abnormally and super fast. And, um, and, but that's like not what they are. They are a kind of new species of organism that shares your genetic material. And there's no other way for me to do this but to talk it out. So let's talk it out. Um, the, what, what, evolution <laughs> is, happens when things uh, that have certain traits succeed. Uh, and by success, we mean that they are able to make more of themselves. So if you make more of yourself, there's more of you. That's just, that's natural selection. That's the, that's it. Uh, man, if, I don't know, it's like not much more complicated than that. Like if you make, and so if this fork was really good to make more of itself and these scissors weren't, then, uh, you know, there would be more forks <laughs> in the room than scissors. And if it could make another one of itself every two seconds, then the whole room would be filled with forks in a matter of moments, and there would be basically no scissors. That's just evolution by natural selection. And the, like the, there might be some other thing that changes about this fork that makes it even better at making more of itself, and then that change, in particular, will propagate through the population quickly. And that's basically it. There's lots of com complexities of statistics and math that go along with it, but that's like the, that's conceptually how natural selection works. And, uh, and we are used to thinking about natural selection happening, I am anyway, uh, both on the scale of single-celled organisms and on the scale of multicellular organisms, and why is that different from each other? And there is a clear difference, which is that the individual cells in my body um, aren't actually looking out for themselves. Imagine an anthill. <laughs> Ants are just wasps. Ants are wasps that learned how to work together. I mean, wasps work together too. But ants are wasps that like really learned how to work together. And one of the, the things that happened with ants when they became ants, like the moment ants started living that, they're actually solitary ants that don't live big nest lives. But for when, when ants got good at having a nest, a group of, of ants all together, when, uh, and that worked together as a team and considered their own, and it's almost like their own individual lives aren't the most important thing, but the colony is the most important thing. When that happened, there was an explosion in the number of smell receptors that the ants have. And so the, the uh, like, just, you know, there was like this one gene and it cloned itself hundreds of times in, in some species of ant so that they are really good at smelling. And what, that's, what the smell receptors do is they control the ant. And if an ant's smell receptor for this ant is dead, is activated, they will do certain activities. If, if it's like follow, they will follow. If it's fight, they will fight. And it's subtle and it's big. And they are constantly being given all kinds of signals by the colony. And based on how they interpret those signals uh, and how much of each signal they are, they, their behavior will change. This is what happened with multicellular organisms. We, so like the, and it, it's worth saying that for the majority of life on earth, maybe, it probably, it was just single-celled organisms. Billions of years it took to go from single-celled to multi cell And there's, there's some, it, that's important. It's hard to make that transition, even if it gains you advantage. Because when, so say like you're, I'm sorry about this. I'm working through it. And there's a reason why I want to work through it. Because I want to explain this to people, but I haven't gotten my head around how to do it in a simple way. Um, so imagine that just like the simplest specialization that would be advantageous for a multicellular organism. You have one cell that's specializing in the creation of food and one cell that is specializing in reproduction. 
And so that way, if you don't have to have all the reproduction and food stuff inside of each cell, this one can just be focused on food and then can share the food with the reproduction cell. And the reproduction cell can just focus on reproduction. And that would be good for the food cell because it uh, would then get reproduced. But would it? Here's the wild thing about this, because the food cell never reproduces. It might reproduce in the individual organism, but it will not be passed on to the next generation because the reproductive cell is going to be the one that's passing its genes on. But it's not about the cell. The cell is not the unit of natural selection. The gene is the unit of natural selection. So if it'll, like, the, the genes that are in the food cell are also in the reproduction cell because this is one organism that's just having different genes activated in different cells. So the same genetic code but like each cell is doing something slightly different and that's going to require a lot of intracellular signaling and like all of the like epigenetic stuff that like didn't have to exist in single celled organisms. So it's very hard to make this transition. And so you've got this and it's actually better for uh, in the long term for the food cell to nourish and sustain the reproductive cell so that it can focus on just reproduction. And that will provide an, an advantage which would allow that organism to proliferate and for there to be tons of them because if it makes more of itself there will be more of them and it, that's that's on the gene level if the genes can make more of the genes then there will be more genes that's what's being selected for and this is like a that's like a conceptually hard leap to make that the thing that is being selected for is not the organism but its genes i don't know how to help people make that leap and i know that like you know, that's what Dawkins did in The Selfish Gene. So maybe I should just read through some of it and reread through some of it and see how he did it. Um, and then just do that and say shit and damn and fuck more often. And that's like, now it's Hank style. Um, that's, that's what I'll do. I'll just take The Selfish Gene, put a bunch of curse words in it and then republish it and be like, whoa, it's my gene. I'm so genius. Um, so... But I'm trying to, I'm sort of speeding through it a little bit um, because I don't think that I've done a good job of explaining why the gene is the level, is like the unit of selection rather than the organism. But I am going to move on from there. So like say that this continues to go for a long time and then you get an organism that has a bunch of specialized cells. What can happen is that like the gene is the unit of selection and so it's selecting for all kinds of cooperation inside of the body for the individual ants that are you to not care about their own survival, to care about the survival of the reproductive cells, to care about like, how do we make it so that we can get our genes into the next generation of a uh, multicellular organism rather than into the next generation of individual single cells because that's actually really advantageous and so it's being selected for. And all of the systems, all of the smell receptors so that the cells can work together really carefully so that they don't get, so they don't invade on each other's turf so that if they start to, if things start to go wrong, they kill themselves. If they uh, get bad at, at uh, you know, copying themselves well and repairing damage, then they kill themselves. If they um, start to, and so like all there's all these systems to prevent all that stuff from happening and there's but what happens what cancer is is when the individual is when an one single cell evolves ways to get out of all of those control mechanisms that make that have been selected for for it to pass like all of the genes to get passed to the next generation and instead it's being, what's being selected for is suddenly, I can just make lots of myself inside of this organism. So I have evolved a way to infiltrate through other tissues and not listen to the signals that I'm getting to obey and not do that. Because like our tissues don't overlap, right? Like they're good at that. But if I could evolve a way to do that, then I can make more of myself and pass my genes on individually inside of this organism. It's no longer evolving, which is something that's like happens on the scale of generations and so years. It's no longer evolving to pass its genes to the next generation of human. It's evolving to pass its genes onto the next generation of cell. And so it is 
reverting to a single-celled lifestyle. The cancer is saying, okay, if I can pass through tissues and not be sort of held in place, if I can replicate myself a bunch and turn off the machinery that tells me to not do that, if I can, if my genes, if I get worse, this is a weird thing about cancer, if I get worse at repairing my DNA, I will evolve faster. So I, I will get new abilities because I will mutate more. And so natural selection can happen faster. Um, if I evolve ways to signal the body that I'm not a problem and the immune system should ignore me, or if the immune system itself is already damaged and means that I, I am not going to get messed with. If I evolve ways to tell the body to send me blood so that I can get more oxygen and nutrients so that I can grow myself more. I, and if I, like with Hodgkin's lymphoma, if I can like evolve a, a micro environment by recruiting a bunch of healthy cells to surround and protect me, which is the thing that Hodgkin's does, um, it's evolving all of these tricks so that it can make more of itself, not for the next generation of humans, but for the next generation of cell. And it doesn't know that it's destroying its opportunity to exist beyond that individual because it, you know, if, if it's hurting the individual, that it's not helping. Like it, these things don't know, they don't know what they want. They're just, if something allows it to make more of itself, there will be more of it. So if the ability to infuse a tissue, to, to pass through and, and, and disobey the laws of the body that say, do not pass through, tissues shouldn't pass through each other. If it, uh, you know, if it, if like a trait evolves that allows it to do that, there will be more of it. If it evolves a trait to signal to the body to send it lots of blood, there will be more of it. So it's just evolution happening on the single-celled scale inside of a body. And that happens instead of on the course of years and decades, like it does with humans. It happens in the course of, you know, hours, honestly. Like, I don't know how fast they replicate, but like fast. They can go very fast. Now, your cancer is not going to grow in like in dangerously in hours. If you're watching this and you uh, are have cancer anxiety or you have cancer or you have someone who loves you who has cancer, this is not saying that all these things happen super quickly. You know, like I like Hodgkin's is a very fast growing cancer, but it is still you know, my doctor was has been very insistent that like catching it, like on the like changing the date of diagnosis on the orders of of days to months you know, like a few months, it just doesn't matter that much. Um, on the scale of like maybe six or 12 months, it does matter. Um, but that's, a, you know, really the reason why they sort of like start to really chug along and get you in there and start to, is more about your anxiety than what the cancer is going to do, usually. Which is why a lot of people um, don't, you know, get diagnosed and don't start treatment for, you know, a month or two. Uh, because as they uh, do some, like they might do egg harvesting or other fertility treatments to make sure that, you know, because chemo oftentimes messes with fertility, etc. So that, like, I think that the weakest part of that thing that I just pitched to you is understanding, like, that, like how natural selection actually works, which is weird because it is really simple. You know, it is just that if you make more of yourself, then there is more of you. But the fact that that is functioning on the level of individuals like me, and then individual cells, and then individual genes within cells, and that ultimately it really is the genes that are that it's about. Because otherwise, like all the cell, if it was about the cell, then all the cells in my body, like they would be like, I'm not making more of myself. Like I'm not passing on onto the next generation because they're not. None of these cells went into my son. None of them. You know, like if I if Catherine's yes, mine no. Uh, it's uh, like I, I don't think I don't like he, he's probably got some of my atoms in him, but more likely from kisses than from sperm. Right? It's like a tiny thing, one cell that got gets eaten up by the egg. So it wasn't my cells that created more of themselves in my son. It was the genes that now are in all of my cells. And then, you know, half of them are in his cells. So the, but like, I, I feel like I, I feel like I haven't got there quite yet with explaining how that works. If anybody has advice for how, how to do that succinctly and in a fun way, um, 
I was talking about ants a bunch because I think that there's like an interesting analogy there to like an ant colony and the individuals of an ant colony servicing the broader colony because they are also acting in the service of their genes. So an ant colony is weird because it's an even further step removed. And this is also true of humans, but I don't know if I want to get into it in certain ways. Um, so it's, it's like an ant in a colony isn't about making more of itself. Many of them are not fertile at all. It's about servicing the queen who has their genes uh, and the drones who, who are likely to share their genes because they're likely to be their, their parents. I don't know if drone is the right term. Um, and, uh, and they all sort of work together. Uh, and so they have evolved to not be servicing themselves. They have evolved to service the whole because that's the best way to get the genes passed on to the next generation. It's not about passing their, their, the genes that they actually have in their body. It's about passing the genes that the same gene is going to be in the other ants in the colony that are reproductive because they came from those ants. Um, so the, it's the, the gene doing the work. And it's wild that like ants when, so like it's ants, uh, the colony to individual ant to individual cell to individual gene. So it's like super, and it's almost easier to understand because you see that, that like a bunch of ants in an ant colony work together to uh, service the colony despite the fact that it's like not actually good for any individual ant. That's what's happening in the body. A bunch of cells work together, despite the fact that it's not good for any individual cell. Until, that's a good way to put it. It's not good for any individual cell. Uh, but what if one of the cells was like, but what if I wanted it to be good for me? What if one of the cells starts to evolve so that it, you know, and if it, what if one of the cells, uh, starts to make more of itself and then there is more of it and then it gets good at making more and more of itself and then it evolves these traits that allow it to continue to make more of itself which is why cancer is a, a tricky one because if you you know if you do chemo and you kill off a, 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 all of the cancer but it turns out there's like a couple left those are going to be the cells that are most likely to be not as susceptible to the chemotherapy so second round, the same treatment of chemo is less likely to, to impact it or even, you know, significantly likely to not have a good impact on it. And it was much, much more likely to become what they call refractory, where you, you know, the disease isn't responding to treatment, um, isn't being killed off by the treatment. But like what this means is that cancer, if you followed any of that, is like another species. It's acting as a new species of single-celled organism that just so happens to share, to, to be genetically you. Now it is not, like I love this because it's super weird. And if you, if you can follow all of that, then you can get to this point where it's like, are you fucking joking with me right now? That like you, and it's an entirely new species and every individual, it's a new species of cancer. It's a new species of organism. And so your job, like every time someone with cancer dies or someone with cancer successfully treats themselves, there is an extinction occurring. You are extincting a species of single-celled organism that shares your DNA, but is acting on its own behalf, which is neat. That makes sense to me. Like, I don't think that, I, please let me know if that part didn't make sense because I feel like that part would make sense, but I feel like the, I feel like the natural selection part is the hard part, which is weird because it's not that complicated. If you can make more, if something can make more of itself, there will be more of it. It's just the, it's the whole story there. All right, curious what you think. Hank's channel out.